Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out another one of the Dirty Harry movies. This is the third one in the series titled The Enforcer and I'm really excited for this one because I have really liked the first two Dirty Harry movies. Obviously starting out with Dirty Harry and then moving into Magnum Force. Now in my Magnum Force video I said that Magnum Force was my favorite one after you know sitting on the movie for a while and thinking about both of them and editing Magnum Force and stuff like that. I think Dirty Harry is actually still my favorite but Magnum Force is a close second and so that being said, I'm really excited for The Enforcer and to see if it can topple Dirty Harry as my favorite one in this movie series so far, or at least be as good as both Magnum Force and Dirty Harry. And as you can see, I'm at my home and not at my dorm, which means no color changing light today, unfortunately. But fortunately, we do have my puppy Huxley. She's here sleeping on the bed. She loves the Dirty Harry movies and she also loves Clint Eastwood as an actor. So she's very excited to be watching the movie today with me and you. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon of uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early. Thank you so much for checking out. Let's get back to the video. Okay, it's time to dive on into this movie. I'm hoping to see Clint Eastwood be as grumpy and awesome as he has been in the last two Dirty Harry movies. So I hope you enjoy my reaction to The Enforcer. Nowhere with you numb nuts. Buzz off. Don't know why she scared me so much, but she did. Because I watched a horror movie this morning. I watched Event Horizon this morning, which is on the channel now, and that scared me a lot. <laughs> so now I'm terrified of things. Got a couple bottles of ice cold beer up there. Be interested. She's definitely a murderer. Now the guess is which one of these two men gets shot first. I think the guy on the left gets shot first. At least they're gonna die with a nice view. Dying with a nice view reminds me of James Bond, A View to Kill. And you know what? I watch all the James Bond movies on the channel. <laughs> you can check them out if you'd like. Oh god. Interesting that we're gonna know who the killers are straight away. Oh! He's definitely been stabbed. Where's the other guy? Oh god. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Beers in hand as well. You could have at least shot him when he didn't have the beers in hand so the beers weren't wasted. You know what I mean? The music is still just as good. He has a new partner again. This guy's gonna die. He knows if he's the partner of Clint Eastwood in a Dirty Harry movie, he's going to die. What's with the what? Police officer, what's the problem? Yeah. Come on, it's a heart attack. Okay, well, he's not a medical master. <laughs> he's like, I don't know how to treat a heart attack. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Harry! <laughs> He's faking it. Holding hostages, I heard. Don't get anything till I come in and talk. Alright, you bastard, lay your piece on the hood of that car! What a gun. I may have to move fast, and I don't need too much linguine to hold me. <laughs> Why is he walking so coolly, man? I'd be so scared if I were the people heisting this place because he's just walking so calmly. Eagle, move it! Okay, the lady's out of the way at least. First, we want all the pigs out of here. Second, pigs, I only see human beings. Haha, <laughs> ba boom. Tsh. You got the picture? Yeah. But what are you waiting for? <laughs> Let me get up. I wonder if these guys would actually have the guts to kill innocents. Usually people are just bluffing. Give them one. Give them that one. Son of a bitch! Oh my god. Calm down. Oh, Clint, man. Oh, wow. Oh, right in the butt. He has a second butthole now. Buddy, you didn't need that. How can that be? You want an itemized account? 
You took out, uh... How can that be? You rammed a car through the window. For what? Excessive use of force. Yeah, but... For your information, you Callahan... Safe. I went to the city if someone saved me. You're on notice, Callahan. This little Wild West show of yours yesterday is exactly mm. the kind- Wild West, I'm also watching the, the Fistful of Dollars trilogy on the channel. You've got 10 seconds to make up your mind, here I come. What are you gonna do? One. You're- Two. You're Okay, that counting doesn't happen. Three women. Do you object, Inspector? Now, who might you be? Oh, this is- mid Yeah, why did you question three women? That seems strange. Something about uh, winnowing the Neanderthals out of the department. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at you, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> As you know, this is the final stage in your examination. It's a rather informal test in which we try to get... She's going to be important during this movie. How fast do you run the hundred? Come on, Callahan, you know how this board functions. I feel like running is a good thing to test on as well, though. You need to run as a police officer eventually. Places in the home, is that what you're trying to say? What do you think this is, some kind of encounter group? No, I can see where Clint Eastwood is coming from. Well, if she fails out there, she gets her ass blown off. It's my ass and uh, my hard luck. <laughs> if you get blown away, he gets blown away with you. And that's a hell of a price to pay for being stylish. See, like, I can see what he's going for. He's not against women in the workforce. Are He's against with the, questioning, the fact that they haven't been trained well enough to be in this workforce and they're just being put in for diversity's sake. Paragraph one of the California State Penal Code. A conspiracy to commit a misdemeanor is in fact a felony and a Hey, she knows. Thank you, Officer Moore. You'll be notified of your- Hey, he's- he- he's kind of like, whoa. Yeah, I was pretty sure that he's not against women in the workforce. Although it seemed like he was at the start. I was like, what the heck, man? But it seems like he's more like the council isn't thinking like they haven't been trained enough to be in a position so high up. Dynamite, detonators, and uh, any plastics. Right. What are they preparing for? That's a lot of guns and ammunition. Right, you guys, now, this is for the people. Right on, right. for the people. They're like a hippie group for the people. A murder hippie group. Hey, you got a phone I could use? Oh, yeah, right this way. No. Oh, that's so unfortunate. He was just a nice old man. The heist is on. Now he left the gate open. Ready to check it. Oh, this is so unfortunate for you two. I'm gonna check around. Frank, watch yourself. Dude, Frank is about to be die. About to be die, that's what he's about to do. He's about to be die. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Go Frank. Although Frank's going into that going to die soon. Are you back there? Stand up where I can see you. Oh god, she has a gun. Now just wait a second, mister. Are you shut up and listen. Person. Yeah, I was gonna say they're missing one person. The knife again. This guy loves knives. Oh. Did she get shot? Come on, man. You're just gonna screw around and get us caught. No, man, she's alright. We're gonna make it. Forget it. She's dead. dead. Forget it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. He's got the crazy eyes. He never blinks. Oh, he's still alive. Frank, Frank, Frank. Damn it. Oh, that's a little unfortunate, buddy. Well, uh, Irene's in there with him now. Is that supposed to be some kind of answer? I like his white outfit. I'll smoke a cigarette. <laughs> okay. The pump they cut me. I've seen him before. Oh, where? The young hooker up on the Fillmore District. I don't remember that one. They have to go just yet. Not if you don't want me to. Thanks, Harry. Oh, they're best friends. Is he gonna die? Those bastards. I'll see you in my office in 30 minutes. Oh my god, he just died. He literally said goodbye and then died. I'm coming down there in five minutes. You better have those files open, you pencil-pushing son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, you better. Chess and Maddox, Skidmore. Shall I tell you my instinct on this? No, I don't care about it. Dude. What we've got here is a well-organized 
group of militants? No, it's not them. There, I want you to know exactly what you're up against. No, I've got too much to do. Besides, I've already been checked out on the law. I kind of want to see what these rockets do. No way there's a new one. Oh, it's her! Okay, yeah, of course. No, you're gonna like you her. You know, Inspector Moore. There's no way she can die. Clint Eastwood's partner in this movie has already died. There's no way she can die too. Any special consideration? Marvelous. The law's rockets. Yes, I want to see it. A one-shot throwaway disposable bazooka. One-shot throwaway disposable bazooka. If you've all had a good look at the rocket, I'll demonstrate how it works. Ah, oh, give her a look. Come on. Oh my god. He didn't even check. He didn't even check to see if someone was behind him. It's bad gun safety there. Coming, Inspector. Jeez, that gun is terrifying though. It blew up that car so hardcore. 13.5 in my gym shorts. What? My time in the hundred. You asked me at the Earl's board. That's actually not bad. How about your partner? It's not the first one I've lost. Yes, I know. You've lost three in three movies. I know him from somewhere. Tan suit? Yeah. Is that one of the robbers? Up on a firing range. I've got it on tape for you. We've just finished the abdominal cavity. <laughs> She's gonna throw up. I would too. What kind of a knife was it? A long, heavy blade. We're going into the skull now. Into the skull? Oh. Oh, I would leave. Oh. Oh. Ew, even in shadows, this is so disgusting. Yeah, honestly, if you're in homicide, you have to be okay with that. Bomb! That was a bomb. Excuse me, I'm with him. A bathroom bomb. No, I don't think so. So, where you go? He didn't even get anyone. Hey, we got them all. They're okay. Oh, good. oh that's good. No? You sure? Black guy with a tan hat and suit. Uh, brief it was that guy, though, I swear. Was he a short guy, about 5'1"? No, this dude was six foot. I like how Clint Eastwood oh, asked the guy who did it. a question that he knew was wrong to see if the guy actually knew something. Where? Right down here. What the hell didn't you tell me? He, he, she was trying to. She was trying to. Well, the metal detector doesn't work, obviously, if they let a bomb in. She in heels? I feel like you shouldn't be wearing heels. If you're gonna go on chases, always wear running shoes. <laughs> okay, good. She's smart. She's smart. You could probably also get DNA fibers from his hat as well. <laughs> Who is this guy, man? I love the music so far. Okay, you have the briefcase. That's good evidence. The music is so jazzy. This is so fun. Oh. Someone doesn't have cell reception anymore. No, come on. Oh. Oh my god, what a place to fall. They're filming a porno. <laughs> <laughs> That's like top 10 places to fall. That was a really smooth fence jump. Why are these doors open? I mean, I know the door's unlocked, but still. You're under arrest. In the name of God, man, this is a church. What are you doing? <laughs> <In> the... <laughs> That's funny. Runs like a rabbit. I'm not about to let him go. I'd like to see the credentials right now. Who are you, like a fighting priest? I think you're a disgrace to this city. Okay. What? Why? <coughs> hey, she made it though. She made it. Black militant group called Yuhuru. Hey, uh, Buso, show. It's not the militant group. Harry, do me a favor. Go easy on her, huh? It's her first day, and it's been a damn long one. This is a crazy first day. I suppose it would do any good to suggest you wait in the car, Inspector? Don't concern yourself, Inspector. Don't concern yourself, Inspector. Oh, you welcome. You about as welcome as a turd in a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good one. Lady Fuzz can get your little white asses out of here. Uh, what is Henry Lee into now? 
<laughs> Would you like to buy into that? Four counts of murder, aiding and abetting. You got the wrong number, boy. Yeah, it wasn't me. Patty, dude, she met Vietnam. Why? Anybody on this list here grab you? Oh, good idea. Room 401, Fairmont. Rest easy at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> Forget about my interior decorator, and I'll see what I can do. Okay, okay. <sighs> Bobby Maxwell. Bobby Maxwell. Objection to the way I handled myself in there. I wish you'd just say so. I thought I was doing all right. Yeah, I thought you were doing well too. Probably pretty scary, actually. She was, she was kind of ganged up on a little bit there. What's happening? No! No, 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 no. It has such bad timing. It's not them. Yeah, no violence. If you know violence, there's no implication. This actor is really familiar too. To show how your new guidelines for women in the police department have worked, sort of. Uh... You're just hoping if it's a wrong arrest, it's not on your shoulders. And here come a couple more. Ah, right, good morning. Right this way, Lieutenant Breslin. Ah, uh, these more. two. Would you move along for... Yeah, they're gonna get all the credit. Mr. Mayor, would you join them, yeah, Captain right. K? Please, Clint Eastwood's gonna be so mad about this. This is Inspector Moore and Callahan. Huh. They're so confused. Time homicide investigator. And we are very proud of her stunning professionalism. She knows it's a lie. She knows it's a lie. Just so you hand them something for the cameras. Well, all right. Thank you, Jimmy. Wow, it's not even real. Uh, would you mind telling me what these commendations are supposed to be for? <laughs> People were. Another thing, Inspector Moore and I weren't even there. What the hell's he talking about? Yeah. Hell out of half this city. I hate the police. And meanwhile, you're telling everybody how great we are. All right, Callahan. The police in these movies, especially, are so ignorant. They just want to finish the story because so they can. Suspension. Make it ninety. A hundred and eighty. Give me. A <laughs> That's like a child argument. <laughs> no, infinity plus one, infinity plus two. <laughs> Go down there and uh, go down there and. Uh... And what? What are you gonna do now? Inspector Callahan. Oh, there she is. I was wondering where she was. What makes you think so? Woman's into. You think these people are actually just watching them film? Cop in this city is satisfied with a 38 or 357. What do you have to carry that cannon for? Cause it's sick. A 44 Magnum. It's iconic. It's for the penetration. Does everything have a sexual kind? I was about to say the exact same thing. Okay, Harry, let's not go sleeping with your partner right now. They arrested the wrong guy, but their egos won't let them admit it. That's what I said. That's literally what I said. Well, we're good citizens. Why don't we post Mustafa's bail? Not a bad idea. Yeah, let's do it. Wanna have a couple of beers? Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know, whoever draws you as a partner could do a hell of a lot worse. That is as much of a compliment as you're ever going to get from him. <laughs> Apple juice advertisement right there. Mr. Mayor, I think. Who goes to watch baseball in a suit? Why are so many of the guys in suits? Well. I'll see you, Carl. Yeah, you don't have see to be back to the office. You know how hot you would be? You're probably going to be dying of heat exhaustion if you watched baseball in a suit. No, maybe like a either a shooting or a kidnapping of the mayor. That car is so inconspicuous. Think. <laughs> That is a huge taser gun. That is a mega taser gun. Okay, Tex. Okay, here we go. What the hell? Dave, get me out of there. Wait, he's gonna blow it up. That's the big bazooka gun. Oh my god. That guy died so fast. That guy died so fast. Oh no, I liked that guy. Oh. Seems like a pretty weak taser, to be honest with you. Usually when you see someone get tasered, they're like seizing on the ground. 
Oh, he still got shot. Are you serious? He still got shot. That guy did not deserve it. That guy did not deserve it. Justice for Bridgeman. Uh, okay, we're gonna do a little music and I'll be right back. <laughs> right ahead. I want all the information. Why would you pick up the ball? Why would you pick up the ball? You just ruined his game. Is that clear? May I make a statement, McKay? Go ahead. Your mouthwash ain't making it. <laughs> he just had to say that, didn't he? You are a dirty best. Ancient Harry. Dirtiest. Dirty Harry. Revolutionary strike force. Call them so? Oh yeah. They need to shorten the name. People's Revolutionary Strike Force. It's too long, it doesn't roll off the tongue. I thought Tiffany's was gonna be a closing closing? A clothing store, not a massage place. Right in front. That's him. <laughs> Are they just pretending to know him? What it is, is $75. <laughs> 32 positions of love making. That many. That's a lot of positions. That seems very steep. That's expensive. Guess you gotta make a living any way you can. Make it with a rubber dolly. 32 ways. Any objections? That seems horrible. That's so lame. Hi there. You're not Wanda. Yeah, you're not Wanda. Are they writing this and then giving little kisses to the paper? But it's gonna be old ladies? Yeah, that's amazing. You can end up with your balls eating spaghetti sauce. Trying to tell me you got a lot of clout with the syndicate, huh? I love that his hat is so hard, so far off his head. Oh! He almost just took that lady's head off. Go to hell. One more time. Wanda! Alright, alright. There's a plunger on the face. Bye, Huxley. The body of Christ. Yeah, so this guy isn't a real. The body. <laughs> what does you want, Callahan? I'd like to talk to you about Bobby Mann. <laughs> I never met a priest that talks like that before. And what right do you have to come in here and harass oh. me in my church? Oh, a nun? Sacrifices have to be made, mister. <laughs> Oh, that's a gun. It's a gun with a nun. I don't have time to argue religion with you, boy. Oh, she got shot by his partner. Yes! Yes, lady! Good shot, too. Now, where's Maxwell? Oh. Alcatraz. I thought she was gonna be distraught that she killed someone for the first time. I don't suppose it would do any good to suggest... Uh, forget it. <laughs> oh, her smile. Fire hose him! Fire hose him! There's no way he actually fire hoses him. <laughs> what a loser, man. Gun is a cactus. You will never see it. <laughs> the music is still jazzy, but it's so plucky now. Honestly, Dirty Harry sometimes gets a little lucky by not getting shot. Ooh. That was a great shot, though. I'm really scared that she's going to die because of all his other partners dying. Ah, infiltration. Move over there, Your Honor. She's still calling him Your Honor. You laugh at me, you bastard, and I'll shoot you where you stand. Oh my god, that was cold. Yes, lady. Yes, lady. I'm so nervous that she's gonna get stabbed. Take it very easy. You relax. This corner is scary to me. Here we go. I'm so nervous about, yeah, this guy, he's gonna try and stab them or something. He's Mr. Stabtastic. He also has one of those rocket launchers, which he will definitely use at some point. 
Behind you. Oh my god, she got shot. Okay. Oh, the bazooka has been dropped. She can't die. She can't die. There's no way he's losing another one. Don't concern yourself. <laughs> Don't concern yourself. Get him. No, she's dead. No, she's dead. It's sad, but it's funny. It's four. Four partners in three movies. I'm counting the gold guy, Frank, at the start of this one as his partner because they were in the car together at the start of the movie. There's no way. Harry just... No partners for him. Please never give him a partner because they always die. May as well blow up his tower, you know what I mean? Haha! <laughs> Why would you leave the bear down there? Oh! Dude, he got obliterated! Say something, Clint Eastwood. I thought he was gonna say something. This is the first partner that he's actually been really sad about. We have your money. The plane is waiting for you. We have your money. It's over, buddy. That's it. That is the movie. And that was my reaction to The Enforcer, the 1976 action crime Clint Eastwood movie starring Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry, I should say Dirty Harry movie. Tyne Daly as Kate Moore, Harry Guardino, Deveren Bookwalter, and Samantha Doane. Before we get into this review though, if you did enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it if you do. Thank you so much. And now let's get back to the review. I enjoyed this movie. The Enforcer was a really Pretty good movie, I wouldn't say really good movie, but a pretty good movie and a nice third movie in the Dirty Harry series. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, I would actually say it was my least favorite of the three movies, but it still wasn't a bad movie. It was a good movie, it was enjoyable, and there were a lot of things in this movie that I liked. Obviously there are things in this movie, if it's my least favorite, that I thought the other movies did better, and did I say bitter or better? That I thought the other movies did better, which I will talk about later on in this review. So we're going to get into the review, which means we're going to do the reviews first, and then we'll talk about the jazzy music, which was pretty cool. And then we'll talk, probably maybe compare a little bit this movie to the other two Dirty Harry movies. And then I'll talk about the things that I liked about this movie as well. Sorry if my face is all red, by the way. It's really hot in my room. It's 27 degrees inside my room right now because there's no air conditioning. 27 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay, so the reviews of this movie are 6.7 out of 10 on IMDb, which is the audience score and 70% on Rotten Tomatoes which is the critic score so it honestly seems like audiences and critics are very much on the same page when it comes to The Enforcer where they think that it is a good movie an enjoyable movie but not an amazing movie and that's exactly how I feel about this movie as well so I can't really argue with the audience score or the critic score on this one because I don't think it's the best Dirty Harry movie but I don't think it's a bad Dirty Harry movie. I mean, I, there's not been any bad ones of the three that I've watched. There's not a bad one. I just don't think it's a, a bad movie as well. I think it's just a good cop movie, if that makes any sense. And I think audiences and critics kind of understand that about this as well. Okay, so the music of this movie was actually really, really good. There were times where I didn't notice the music, but during the chase sequences, I did notice the music and I noticed it quite a lot. And it was really, really fun. Just like the other two Dirty Harry mu movies, sometimes the music could just pop out there and just be fantastic and amazing and just like the other Dirty Harry movies as well the music was jazzy and alive and something very different than a lot of other cop movies like a lot of other cop movies you have kind of this creepy music or this really loud epic music but Clint Eastwood's soundtrack or I guess not Clint Eastwood's soundtrack Dirty Harry's soundtrack the Enforcer's soundtrack is very much a jazz inspired soundtrack you have like this bass or maybe this deep cello going off in the background boom 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 and then you have maybe a saxophone or a trumpet playing these smooth melodies and it's very chaotic but at the same time you can tell that it's this melody that the music and the instruments are kind of bouncing off of each other to create these melodies and maybe it's all ad-libbed or maybe it isn't maybe it's all improvised or maybe it isn't but I think that kind of sporadicness of the music 
works really well and it's also just really fun to just dance to like the chase sequence where he's chasing that tall guy with the kind of all beige outfit the guy who bombed the bathroom with no one in it weird place to put a bomb by the way and weird place to just bomb in general if there's no one in the bathroom like it's just a little strange maybe it was just for attention i'm not sure a little strange but the music during that chase was so fun i just wanted to dance like it felt like almost it didn't fit the chase because it felt almost upbeat but at the same time i thought it worked really well and it added a lot of character to the chase it didn't it was just an average chase without that music but with the music it became something a lot more and i think that's what the music of these movies all three of these movies has done it's kind of elevated the dirty harry series from being sometimes these average moments in these movies and then the music pops in and you're like oh this isn't average anymore i'm gonna dance to the music now and i thought that was really fun okay so comparing this movie to the other two movies i think villain wise this movie had the weakest villains i think it's hard to argue that this movie had the weakest villains clint eastwood's dirty harry doesn't even see the villains until the end of the movie there's no interaction between them we barely see them we barely know anything about them we see them do i think it's two heists or three heists i think it's three heists they kill these electric guys at the start of the movie and then they do two heists and then they're on Alcatraz and then the big showdown happens. But they were just very weak. The group, you don't know anything about the group. You don't really know any of their personalities. Even the leader, Bobby Maxwell, you don't really know anything about them besides he has these crazy eyes and that he served in Vietnam and that he's like actually a good soldier and stuff like that. But I don't know, they were just kind of a letdown because you see them at the very start of the movie and I was very excited. I know all the Dirty Harry movies so far have started with the murder that has taken place or with the criminal of some sort. But this one I kind of got excited because it wasn't cops it wasn't one single psychopath it was kind of like a group at first i thought it was a lady and i was like that would be really interesting if you had like a lady serial killer that would be really cool but then it became this guy and i was like oh maybe they're like some crazy serial killer couple that would be very interesting as well but then it became the group and i was like okay maybe like a hippie group but then we didn't learn anything about them and i think that is sort of the problem that the second movie had as well with the villains is that there were too many of them. There were four of them in the first movie. Scorpio is so amazing because he's just this singular entity that is bent out of shape on destroying things and killing things and just being this crazy man and he's very memorable i remember his name but in a week i'm not going to remember bobby maxwell and tomorrow i'm probably not going to remember bobby maxwell i don't remember the guy's names all four of the guy's names from the second movie you know what i mean like there's not really any development or focus on the villains in the third movie kind of just like the second movie which was my biggest fault of the second movie and again scorpio remains the best villain the best anti antagonist of these movies and I was sadly disappointed by the antagonist of this one because even if there isn't that much development with the group I know it's hard in an hour and a half to get development from a bunch of characters we didn't even really see development from any of them we never spent time with any of them really besides a moment here or a moment there we never kind of saw them interact with each other again besides a moment here or besides a moment there for Bobby Maxwell's character when we spent time with him it was just more he's evil he's a bad person he kills this woman because she's gonna make it harder for them to escape or something like that you know what i mean it's just there's no personality within the villains and then the fact that clint eastwood's character just never even sees them until the end of the movie there's no interaction with them there's no real chase with them i know that he knows about the group and he's hunting the group from kind of when the guy bombs the bathroom because he's part of that group but he still never even knows a bobby maxwell until over halfway through the movie he doesn't see him until the very end of the movie it's just it was just a little disappointing to me overall i also thought the camera work was not as good as the first two movies it felt kind of like a step down to me not to say the camera work was bad by any means it was still simple just like the other movies it still had that simplistic quality to it that simplistic charm which i really enjoyed from the other two where they're not trying to go out of their way to do these crazy shots it's this kind of more grounded approach to a movie which i really enjoyed and that was still there and i still enjoyed that but the creativity behind some of the shots like the on the in the second movie when you're riding the motorcycle with the villains or in the first movie you had those really long lingering wide shots that just went up into outer space pretty much this movie didn't really have any of that creativity. Sorry, I just smashed the desk, that desk and the camera just shook a little bit. But this movie didn't really have any of that creativity that I felt the first two movies had, or at least not to the same extent. 
What I did like about this movie, though, was, again, Dirty Harry. I thought Clint Eastwood was amazing in this movie. He was so much fun. And I thought he had a lot of good outfits in this movie as well. He had that white outfit which i really enjoyed but also his outfit at the end it was like that brown jacket i thought that was a really cool jacket as well so i thought dirty harry was amazing but i think my favorite addition to this movie was actually tying dolly's character is kate moore she was really fun and she died let me just say this real quick Clint Eastwood, <laughs> he was a little hypocritical when he was talking to Kate about being a partner and like, if you're a lieutenant, you're going to have a partner and if you get shot, then they're going to get shot. You know what I mean? And I was like, Clint, Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry, let me just sit you down and talk to you for a second. I know that your other partners, it wasn't your fault that they died. It wasn't 100% your fault that they died, but they still died. You were still their partner and you still like you didn't get them killed, but they still died. And now again, you and then at the start of this movie, Frank, who wasn't really his partner, but I'm going to count him as his partner. He also died. And now you have Kate Moore, who has died. You have four had four partners, three if you don't count Frank, but four partners in three movies and they've all died. It's a little hypocritical of you to talk to this person and say, <laughs> watch out for your partner. You know what I mean? It's just it was a little funny when I when when you said it. But what I really liked about her character, what I really liked about Kate was kind of her eagerness to show off that she could do it. And she wasn't like cocky or anything like that. She actually had to defy these odds because she was a woman. And because Clint Eastwood is just a grumpy guy in general, she had to kind of prove herself to him. And at the end, he did. And I really liked that arc that her character had throughout the movie. It wasn't this instantaneous thing. And I also thought that Clint Eastwood's, or I guess Dirty Harry's, hesitancies towards female lieutenants was very interesting because at first at first I thought he was just being like sexist and he didn't want women to be in this position of power but then as he kept talking I was like I don't think that's quite it I don't think Dirty Harry is saying women shouldn't be here I think he's saying that women are being placed here for diversity's sake and not because they actually have been trained to do these positions and that not only endangers other people but it endangers them as well and I think he was basically saying ha have women go through these 10-15 years that these male police officers have been doing on the ground have them commit arrests I was gonna say commit murders that's not what I want police officers to do have them to commit arrests and stuff like that have them do what the male police officers have been doing in order to get to the lieutenant position and then when they have earned that place when they have had the necessary experience then they can then become lieutenants instead of putting someone from records like Kate into the lieutenant, the lieutenant position although to be fair Kate did prove herself but I will say Dirty Harry's points did make sense and I think he wasn't being sexist and saying that women shouldn't be in this position he was saying that the department haven't prepared the women that they are going to be putting to, into this position with the necessary experiences that they need to have in order to stay safe yeah i think that is going to be it for my reaction and review thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot i still enjoyed this movie even though it was my least favorite i still enjoyed this movie it was really fun it was entertaining and i again Dirty Harry as a character is just a blast to watch and so I'm really excited to be watching the next one eventually. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.